Ever wondered how mediumship actually works? What does a medium experience while they're communicating with a spirit? If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I post a new video about all things mediumship, including recordings of my readings so you can see me in action and more how-tos about how to communicate with spirit. I've been able to identify not just how I receive information from a spirit, but how to strengthen my ability to receive information from spirit so that I can bring through mind-blowing validations that give peace and healing to my clients. How do mediums receive information from a spirit? Spiritual impressions. What is a spiritual impression? It's like a tiny tidbit of information that you receive through thought. Think about getting an idea suddenly from almost nowhere or a daydream. I have to emphasize how important Important, the subtlety of spiritual impressions actually are. A lot of people don't even know that they're receiving spiritual impressions. It's probably why many people think that being a medium is something that is reserved for a select few special people. It's just not true. That being said, really strong mediums do have a heightened ability to receive impressions and receive them accurately. Still, everyone has a way to communicate with their loved ones on the other side. At first, when you start to suspect and believe that this might be possible for you, you're probably gonna start asking questions like, am I making this up? Is this just my imagination? How do I know that this is really communication from a spirit? By the end of this video, you'll know what to do to tell the difference. How does it work when a medium gives a reading? Every medium is different, but we all use a different combination of the clairs. We have clairvoyance, clear seeing, clairaudience, clear hearing, clairsentience, clear feeling, claircognizance, clear knowing, clairgustance, clear tasting, and clairalience, clear smelling. The other important thing to realize is that with all of these clairs, they can be used objectively or subjectively. Now it's most common for people to receive information via the clairs subjectively. That would mean that it's all inside your mind and coming through thought. Some people do receive spiritual information objectively. So for clairvoyance, you may actually see something outside of your body or hear something for clairaudience outside of your body and so on and so forth. But it is most common to have these impressions received through thought in your mind's eye or in what feels just like your imagination. So when you're in a mediumistic state and a spirit draws near, you will likely use one dominantly, two dominantly, or even a combination of multiple or all of the clairs as you receive spiritual impressions. And they come in little tidbits of information that are a pretty quick flash. It's like receiving just a flow of information that kind of feels like paying attention to a daydream. What strong mediums are able to do is to get themselves and their thinking mind out of the way to know that this is information from a spirit and not something they're making up in their own imagination. During readings, when I get that really strong connection to spirit, I'm talking really fast because the impressions are coming through so quickly and I'm paying close attention to them while my thinking brain is off. I'm really strong and clear audience, so as I relate the information that I'm getting, I don't have time to think about the things that are coming out of my mouth. I use absolutely all of the clairs, although I do use clear gustance, clear tasting, and clear aliens, clear smelling far less than the rest of them. I'm excited to share with you some examples of information I've received via the clairs during real life readings that I've done. Clairvoyance. This is when you see a picture or even kind of a movie reel in your mind's eye. It's in thought. For me, I have lots and lots of symbols that I use with spirits. For example, I usually see a cigarette when someone's telling me that they were a smoker. I often will see different parts of the body to let me know where the ailment was that caused the passing of a spirit. I have other more abstract symbols like a hot air balloon rising with a person in it. This lets me know that that person has had a new perspective or if it's the spirit in the hot air balloon, it would mean that they have a new perspective they'd like to talk about. I see an image of an urn. If somebody wants to let me know they were cremated, I see a casket if they were buried. I had a reading where a department hearted husband showed me a car door opening and change falling out everywhere, only to find that his wife had taken all the change from his car after he passed, put it in her car, and it was constantly falling out all over the place. This was an inside joke and something I couldn't possibly have known, but it came to me through clairvoyance. 
Claire Audience. This is one of my absolute favorite Claire's and one of my more dominant Claire's. A lot of people hear songs playing inside their head. That's a really great example of Claire Audience and one that a lot of people can relate to. I don't hear songs, not while I'm giving readings. More often, this is how I get the names of people that I would share during a reading. In a mediumship training course, I was receiving a reading from a woman who got most of her information from hearing songs. She was bringing through my grandma grandfather. She heard the song Johnny Be Good. She asked who John was and I said that's my grandfather. While I'm giving a reading, the message from the spirit is the time where I really use my clear audience to paraphrase what I'm hearing as quickly as possible and get the message out. One of my favorite examples of a clear audience experience I've had was going to a home where there was spirit activity. I went into a portion of the house and I saw and heard the cellar door slam so loudly in my mind and I looked at the woman who lived there and I said you heard this cellar door slam and then at the same time she and I both said so loud <laughs> Claire Gustance. I remember doing a reading for a woman and bringing through her grandmother. Now she talked about two different things that I could taste. One was a lime, really gave me this puckering feeling. And maybe even when I talk about the lime, you get that yourself. She also talked about watermelons. I really could taste not just the sweetness of the watermelon, how juicy it was, but even the texture. Claire Aliens, the same grandmother who came through talked about lavender. It turns out this woman loved the the color of lavender but she really loved the smell of it and her whole house reeked of lavender and I smelled it again this was subjective for me so both tasting and smelling it's inside my mind that I can really smell this I have objectively smelled before the scent that I smell objectively most often would be cigarette smoke I walk somewhere and I feel like I smell it when there's no possibility that there would be cigarette smoke in that area like in my home that's when I tend to know that my paternal grandmother is sending me signs. Claire sentience. Now this is such a powerful Claire to use and I use it in every single reading. It is one of my more dominant Claire's. I sense feelings of regret, shame, a spirit who wants to make profuse apologies for something that would be very clear sentient, um, feelings of vast love or heartbreak in the loss of someone. These are all different emotions or feelings that I might get from clear sentience. Other different examples would be feeling a quick bump in my chest when I know that somebody has passed from a heart attack or getting kind of a frog in my throat. That usually lets me know that somebody's passed in some kind of respiratory way. That's happened when I've had people who have passed from a virus or from pneumonia or even when they've had lung cancer. I hear a reference to lung cancer but I feel something around a certain area of my body that lets me know what part of the body was ailing. And lastly, clear cognizance, clear knowing. Now I use this clear pretty dominantly as well. The way that this works in my mediumship is I often just know who this person is in relationship to the sitter. So I might know it's a husband. I might know that it's a brother. Um, I might know that the, the passing was tragic. I often know if this person was a parent, how many kids they had. Claire cognizance really comes through when it comes to relationship to sitter and family relationships that people had together. Now, while I could receive that information in a clear sentient way, or sometimes when I receive the number of children somebody have, that's actually in a clairvoyant image and I get hands holding up different numbers. But when it comes to relationship to sitter, it's very clear to me that it's a sudden download of just knowing. All of these clears can work in combination. I might see an image and then sense something about what it meant. They don't tend to work separately. They usually work in conjunction with each other, but as the flow of information comes, it will generally be one thought at a time, flashing as quickly as you can take it and as quickly as you can get your mind out of the way. I'd love to know, is there a Claire that you suspect might be most dominant for you? Please go ahead and leave a comment below this video. Now we're gonna do a super quick exercise so you can experience the subtlety of impressions yourself. Let's start with clairvoyance. I want you to think about the last time you had an apple. Just picture it inside your mind. Is it shiny? Is it red? Is it green? Does it look like it's firm? Are there any bruises on it? Just you thinking about this image in your mind, that's how subtle a clairvoyant spiritual impression is. Now let's go to clairaudience. You go to take a bite of the apple. What sound does it make when you take a bite? Can you hear that crunch? 
Do you hear someone else around you saying, you're eating that apple really loud. That's so loud every time you take a bite of an apple. Do you have a child or another person in your life who said, I wanted the last apple. If you can hear that crunch or someone else asking for a bite, you probably have the ability to strengthen your clear audience. Clear aliens, clear smelling. If you hold that apple up to your nose, even before you've taken a bite, can you smell the scent and the taste of the apple? Clear gustance, clear tasting. Now, when you take a bite of that apple, can you imagine that taste, the juiciness, the crunchiness, or maybe the disappointment of biting into not a crisp apple, but a really mushy apple and how that tastes on your tongue because it's not as sweet or as tart as you want it to be. Now, I bit into a Granny Smith apple and I can feel my saliva running. I can feel the sourness and the tartness when I take that bite. That's Claire Gustin's. Clear sentience. You take that bite of an apple, you're really enjoying it. You feel this sense of just basking in this wonderful taste of the apple. Now you start to feel a little bit of guilt as you realize it's the last apple and that person really did want to enjoy the last apple themselves. You can start to feel a little bit protective because you don't wanna share the apple. Maybe you even feel your stomach rumble a little bit because you were craving the apple and you were so hungry for it. And then finally, a feeling of love washes over you as you realize you really like this person, maybe even love them, and you really do want to share the apple with them. And lastly, clear cognizance, clear knowing. When you watch this person share the apple with you and take their first bite, you suddenly know that as soon as they woke up, they were planning on eating that last apple. You also know that eating this apple, they're thinking of an apple picking memory that you couldn't have possibly known of. A few moments later, they confirm what you know by saying they've been thinking about eating this apple all morning and they even relay the memory of apple picking that they've never shared with you before. The big question that's likely on your mind, how do I know the difference between receiving a spiritual impression and something that I'm just making up in my own imagination? Practice. Sit down with a friend, be transparent, be honest about where you are with your current skill set, and just let them know you'd like to try to practice to see if you can accurately receive any spiritual impressions from a past loved one of theirs. You have to get validation and have someone sitting in front of you. That's the only way to know the difference between what a spiritual impression is that's real and accurate and what's just in your head. And the more that you practice, the more that you're going to start feeling the difference between when your mind is starting to work versus when your mind is blank and you're receiving information from a spirit outside of yourself. Interested in strengthening your clairs so you can communicate with spirit? Download my free guide, three easy exercises to strengthen your clairs and speak to spirit below. Be sure to watch this video next if you want to see me in action and see if you can identify which clairs I'm using as I channel spirit. If you like this video, comment below and tell me what was most helpful for you. And once again, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when my next video comes out.